Narcissists play constant mind games, constant. It is exhausting. It makes you paranoid. It makes you feel small. It eventually eats away at your soul. But when you go to negotiate with them, it's really the worst thing because that's when you feel unstable. That's when you feel you don't have any ground. And so you end up giving away things that you shouldn't give away. And that's when I, as an attorney, have to help people figure out what they are supposed to not be giving away. In this video, I want to give you seven of the mind games that narcissists play that they hope that you won't figure out. I'm Rebecca Zung. I am an attorney. I've been recognized as one of the best lawyers in America by U.S. News. I've helped literally thousands of people in negotiations. I've written a couple of best-selling books. I am dedicated to making sure that you get the information that you need. So I invite you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. So seven mind games they play that they hope that you won't figure out. The first one is the silent treatment. So now, if you try to do this to them, of course, they go absolutely ballistic stick, especially during negotiations, right? They will show up. They literally will storm the gates. They do this to control you. And they do this, by the way, whether it's a romantic situation or a business partnership, because I was in a business partnership with a narcissist. Those of you who are out there dealing with a narcissist in a non-romantic situation, you know that this is true too. They use the silent treatment as a form of control. And what's really maddening is that they will blow up your phone. They will blow up your email. You know that thing is stuck to them like glue. You know that they never leave their phone anywhere. It's it's always right next to them. But yet they won't respond. They use it as a form of punishment and control. And it's incredibly painful. They use it as a way to make you feel isolated, to make you feel unloved, unworthy, undeserving, and to play with your mind. It's one of those games that they play that they hope you'll never figure out. So that's number one. Number two, of course, gaslighting. I mean, it's the mother of all the things that they do. It's a huge form of emotional abuse. I don't even have enough time in this video. I could sit here all day and go into all the forms of gaslighting that they go into. I mean, all the types of narcissism use this, you know, malignant, grandiose, it doesn't matter the type of narcissist that we're talking about. They all use gaslighting as a form of emotional abuse. But really what gaslighting is in its purest form, it's a way of making you question your reality. That's what gaslighting is. It's basically saying what you think you're seeing with your eyes, what you think you heard with your ears, what you are experiencing with your senses doesn't exist. You're delusional. You're crazy. So they attempt to make you question your reality. So they deny things. They accuse you of things. They accuse you of false allegations. They manipulate situations so that you feel like you are losing your mind. They may deny things in text messages, deny things in emails. They deny things directly to your face. I mean, they were literally, you could show them something and they will directly say, no, that is not what it is that you are showing them. You know, you can actually go, well, maybe I'm not seeing this correctly. Even if you are, I mean, they could say something's not blue, even if you're staring at something that's blue. And if you've been dealing with a narcissist long enough, you might go, maybe it's not blue. Maybe I'm seeing Purple. Maybe it's actually red. I mean, you, you'll you actually start to question your own reality because that's how crazy you can start to feel. It starts to cause trauma on you physically. So gaslighting is a real thing. 
It's, it's something that they all do, and it can really take its toll on you in, in a number of different ways. And as I said, I don't have enough time here to go into all of the different ways that they use gaslighting, but gaslighting is definitely one of the mind games that they use. Number three is projection. I call it projection and deflection, you know, lying and denying, projection and deflection, but projection is definitely one of the things that they use. Oh my goodness. I had an employee, one of my paralegals who used to work for me that was a master of projection. Boy, nothing was ever her fault. It was always somebody else's. It was always something else that was going on in her life. Someone else had to take the fall. Someone else had to take the blame for all the different things that went wrong, but it's a defense mechanism that narcissists use to cover up their inadequacies, their irresponsibilities, their wrongdoings. So they project their flaws, their shortcomings, their wrongdoings onto someone else. And most of the time, by the way, it's not the third party, it's you, it's good old fashioned you. It can be a form of gaslighting, by the way. So the next one is love bombing. This is one of the first types of mind games that narcissists will play. This is the, you know, you're usually your intro to them, you know, unless it's your family member, your parent or something like that. You know, if this is somebody that you met along the way, this is your intro to them, right? This is how you get to know them. This is, you know, sometimes called the idealization phase. Oftentimes it's referred to as the love bomb. Even if it's not a romantic situation, it's still oftentimes referred to as the love bomb. But this is the phase where, you know, you see the charming version, the charismatic version of that narcissist. And by the way, they whip this version back on out when they need to, when they think that you are on to them, might leave them. If they need to, this comes out with the future fake or whatever. The fabulous version, the perfect version, the one that makes you feel like you are the most special, incredible human being on the planet. They're really good at this version, but you know what they're doing is they're mirroring you, they're reading you. They're looking to see what it is that you want and they're reflecting that back to you. So that's why that version seems so great because that's what's really happening with that love bomb. So it's not really a real version. It's a totally fake version of a person that they ideally think that you want to see, and then they reflect that back to you. So the next one is triangulation. So this is often referred to as the flying monkeys. You know, this is where they line up third parties, covert narcissists are excellent at this, excellent at this. And this is where they get their little friends, their little minions to make it seem like that you are the only one who thinks a certain way and everyone else thinks that, you know, they're wonderful and you are the only one that thinks that, they're terrible or whatever. Don't think that there's some kind of healthy relationship going on with these third parties. There's not. It's probably a situation that's very similar to the situation that you have, you know? Many times, I used to think that the third parties, these, these flying monkeys were in on it all the time. Many times they're not. They're just part of the narcissist manipulation and they don't even realize it. One of the things that I kind of figured out when I was dealing with the narcissists in my life is stay away from all of them because it's all bad energy. It's all a whole bunch of drama, trauma, and chaos that you don't need. And especially if the narcissist has them under their spell in some way, it definitely is not worth it. Especially because narcissists have this tendency to want to pit people against each other. You don't really want to be caught up in that whole 
situation, I would just stay out of the whole deal myself. I would say, wish them well, but over there, okay? We are working our way through seven mind games that narcissists play that they hope that you don't figure out. Next one is discarding people. Narcissists love to do the discard. And by the way, they discard and then they come. It's sort of like this bungee thing. They discard and then they snap you back in because as soon as you discard, they don't actually want to discard because if there's any supply to be had, they snap you back in. Because they discard you and you go, well, I don't really want to be discarded and you get over it and it's like a horrible, it's painful and it's awful. And then you go, well, all right, let me live my life and I'll deal with it and whatever. And then here they come with their Hoover thing. You don't need it. So, but that's what they do. They discard and then they, they're like sticky fingers back in again, but they discard if there's nothing left, if there's no, there's no more useful purpose, if there's no more juice in that battery, it's super painful and it can be super abrupt and you can leave you feeling very hurt, very confused, very abandoned feeling, very isolated. And it's horrible because obviously, you know, you've actually got feelings involved over here, but they don't have that same level of capacity to have those feelings. It can be awful. It's time to move on when you've dealt with that. And so I'm just going to say, put in the comments, move on, just move on. Don't look back, move on. We've worked our way through six of them. There's one more that I wanted to make sure that you got. This is the biggest one that I see narcissists do. And this is especially prominent in covert narcissists who I think tend to be the worst ones in relationships, the worst ones, because these are the stealthiest types of narcissists. This is the type of narcissist that I had to deal with in two different instances where they targeted me. And it's extremely painful. It's extremely toxic. And that is they play the victim. The reason why this is extremely difficult is because the rest of the world may actually see this person as a victim, you know? So this is very different than a grandiose narcissist where, you know, the person is extremely strong, extremely boisterous and bragging, comes along and demands the best table in the restaurant or holds court wherever they go. And so people don't feel sorry for that person necessarily. If this is a covert narcissist or a person that's playing the victim and people actually do see this person as a victim and especially as a victim of you, and they're going around telling everybody how horrible you were to them, even if you did nothing to them, it's super frustrating at the very least and can be very, very painful and hurtful and harmful at the worst. And narcissists are excellent at playing the victim card. They make people feel guilty, not just you feel guilty, but they make others around them feel guilty, or they make others around them think that you should feel guilty or others around them feel sorry for them. And they use this to control people. Then they gain sympathy. There's a huge payoff. They'd rather have the sympathy seen as a victim and get the sympathy than have a relationship, a real relationship with people that they should be wanting to have a relationship with because that payoff is so huge. If you are dealing with this, it is something that you will need to support with, you will need help with, you will want to make sure that you are dealing with this the right way. Download that you can get. It's 15 free phrases 
for disarming narcissists, which you can get at disarmthenarc.com. So just go to disarmthenarc.com and you can get that. And join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, then I suggest that you do that now. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. The next video that I suggest that you watch is Covert Narcissism in Relationships. That will explain a whole lot more about how covert narcissists act in relationships. Definitely go watch that video next. I'm Rebecca Zung. I'm so glad that you were here. Remember, today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I will see you in that next video, Covert Narcissism in relationships.